Well, thank you very much, and I'm really happy that I'm here today and I have this opportunity to present our thoughts, our ideas. So today's presentation will be a little bit about our organization, a little bit about our like background, what we have done, and a little bit about like uh, where we see the future, so how we see the governance in future, uh, where we see the open data, for example, in future, what kind of role they can play in our everyday life. So where we are today, where we, we should be in tomorrow, and why it is important really to have these kind of communities all over the world. That's a key point, I think, in the in this presentation. So a little bit about IDF, Innovation and Development Foundation, which I'm like uh, representing now. This is a um, solution team, organi like organization, which is creating some solutions, especially in reforms, in governance. We are more focused on governance. Sometimes we have we're working with businesses as well but mainly we're working on the uh, reforms on governments because the bigger background of the people who are in this organization they are more mostly practitioners who did some reforms in different countries mainly in Georgia but also maybe in Ukraine in some other countries in our region um, the idea is to always like creating something new so uh, well we have only one restriction that we never copy so we don't think that countries are just xerox, xerox let's say copiers to copy from one to another sometimes unfortunately not sometimes quite often different like international organizations they're offering reforms from one country to another so they are just trying to copy all these like different things what what is happening from one country to another and then they are like saying why we fail so why there is a problem because it's impossible to copy because all the time there is some kind of local specifics which you need to take into consideration so IDF is uh, here is some blocks of our work of IDF, so Reforms Lab, which is actually our um, open co-working space uh, in Kiev, a uh, space like this, where we are doing all this stuff, like we are also like writing on the walls, I don't know, like uh, doing brainstorming, so round tables, this kind of presentations, some hackathons and, uh, and all this stuff. Here is, here is different, let's say, blocks of our work, but I will specifically uh, say several words about IDF eGovGovTech and IDF uh, CivicTech. So uh, what is the difference between them? eGovGovTech, it means that we're trying to put some kind of, let's say, policy in e-governance, which will create like sustainable, ongoing development of the e-technologies in the country, and especially in governance. So as for civic tech, civic tech initiative, like we're trying to work with uh, many different like people, not only to hear presentations, but also to do some trainings. For example, how to use open data, what is the API, how to access different data, or how we, you can analyze that, what are the best, practice, best practices in the world which we can use and localize in Ukraine, in Georgia, and some other countries where we're working. And also what we're trying is to build up some kind of community like you are doing, yes? So community which is supporting these kind of initiatives in country. Now we, are, um, we have from time to time some trainings for the people. We, have, we are doing some like open sessions. We are doing hackathons. For example, like we're doing like there is data about um, tenders, yeah, about procurements, which is quite corrupt in country. So we're putting that 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 task to 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 young people, and we're saying that not to not only to young like all ages, and uh, we're saying that let's think how can we analyze that that uh, the data. So what kind of analytical tools we can create, which will give us more opportunity to control that system, to to be able to have more more transparency. And also, we're very interesting initiative with what we have just uh, recently uh, initiated together with some several organizations. We are starting um, now like a wiki investigation platform. So what is wiki investigation? It will work like Wikipedia, yeah, but it will be for investigations. In our part of the world, it's really uh, the, the biggest problem is corruption, unfortunately, and uh, corruption cases, and, uh, and quite often prosecutors' office and investigators, they are not investigating that. And from the other hand, we have just journalists who are putting some articles in newspapers, which, um, you know, like, some, in some cases, is just blackmailing, or I don't know, like, it's just like some kind of, let's say, PR, part of the PR campaign and nothing else. So what we are trying is that we're saying that we have really qualified investigators who are not working in government, but they can investigate the cases. So, for example, the person who is interested in some certain case, 
the, he can initiate uh, the, the, the investigation through that platform, can create some kind of, let's say, team together with some other volunteers who, who wants to participate in the platform. And plus, what is most important, they can use crowdsourcing. So they will ask to entire like society, send us all information which you have uh, like about that guy who is corrupt and who about which we think that there, there is some corruption, let's say, um, possible corruption case. And uh, investigation is ongoing as it should be in a law enforcement agency, in a, like, uh, for example, prosecutor's office, but it is done by civic, uh, like, uh, let's say, civic um, uh, investigators. Um, and I think that this, that system would, would, would really work. And I think that that's uh, really something interesting what, what we'll have in future. So many some other things. And just one, one point here, I, I think you have seen here, IDF wine and reforms. So what's that? What's, what is the wine and reform? So uh, in Ukraine and Georgia, we were trying to attract ministers, members of parliament to this kind of discussion. And quite often, you know, they, they are tired at the end of the day. They are saying that they don't have enough time. So um, they are like always creating some, I don't know, like uh, problems, arguments, why not to come. So we added a little bit of like tricky thing like wine. Yeah, and we said that if you will come to our evening, evening discussion, which is on some certain topic, we will have like free Georgian wine. So Georgia is a cradle of wine. At least it is written in a British Museum of Wine. So we are selling that like, uh, yeah, we are selling that brand to, to, to all the pe people. And also here is, why, by, by the way, IDF Integrator, what it means, for example, yesterday we, we had a very interesting meeting with uh, Balut, uh, Balut org, dot org, yes, the, the representatives are here. So we're trying to find like good solutions all over the world and to integrate that, for example, in, in our country or in our part of the world. So that's an idea. Uh, so a little bit about background, what we were doing. So I was Deputy Minister of Justice, but I was not born as the Deputy Minister of Justice. Yeah, so I was like, uh, uh, I was working in government, in the public sector, like from 23. And um, uh, one of the projects, like well, we had done many projects, especially in, in e-governance, all these data, populations, registries, I don't know, everything we have created in Georgia. And uh, also like one of the uh, projects is this public service hall, everything in one space. Um, uh, like before that it was one of the most corrupt uh, country in the world georgia before 2004 b before like rose revolution which has happened and government has been changed in our country and we started immediately some reforms so at the end of the reforms in 2010 12 we opened this kind of spaces which are like a um, uh, concept of everything in one space for example this is uh, uh, Tbilisi Public Service Hall. You can see here there are 700 operators who are serving every day 15,000 citizens, and uh, they are these citizens are coming. Uh, for all the different documents. I don't know, IDs, passports, birth certificates, uh, company registration, property, land, everything can be done through that, that uh, service centers. And they, it is operating through this September 2012, this biggest one in Tbilisi, which is a total like um, uh, area of the building is 30,000 square meters, and service area is something like six, 7,000 square meters. Um, uh, and what, 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 what is the concept here? So for example, we examined in these two days, little bit in Chicago, as well. So you can hear from politicians that they have one-stop shop. But unfortunately, if you will really examine that field, there, there is, I don't know, 50 places which are called one-stop shop. 50 places. So the question was why it is uh, one-stop shop if there is 50. So why 50? Because, I don't know, some uh, like a birth certificate you should need to take to, from another, from one place. So like construction permit you need to take from another place. Um, that this, uh, these mediators, like uh, private companies who are doing huge money on the bureaucracy. Uh, how it is called? Uh, give me how it's called, the, the name of... Uh, um, uh, who, who, where are you registering your property? Where, where are you coming? Some, some private offices. Uh, some private offices who are doing very good business on bureaucracy, which is created by the government. So they exist just because government has created some bureaucracy, some procedures in order to register different documents. Um, title, yeah, that, that title. You know, the Chicago title, which is the biggest one. 
uh, as, as I know, but they are big because there is big bureaucracy here. So, like, uh, they exist because there is some bureaucratic procedures. But in Georgia, in this public service hall, you can come and in, in five minutes you can register your property. So you don't need to bring any documents. You need to bring uh, bring buyer of your property, and you need to come there, and you are just signing the like uh, uh, document, and that's all. It is registered on the new name. So that was an idea to simplify services, not only to build up the new buildings. Um, so in 15 minutes you can get everything. Thing. These are some buildings from different um, different cities. For example, that this is different city of uh, Georgia. So it is architecturally, well, let's say I don't know, like uh, some some uh, futuristic ar architecture as well. Uh, this they, they, this is Batumi Public Service Hall where we had uh, uh, Hillary Clinton. She was visited like uh, before presidential campaign. She was visited like uh, and uh, like. Um, uh, she was really uh, amazed and she sent to us many different uh, groups from different countries. Now we started the same project in, in Ukraine um, and we will open this kind of public service halls. Again, idea is that whenever I need something from the government, I shouldn't think where to go. I need just to know that if I will come to them, that center, I will get that service. So, like, uh, like uh, even uh, like school certificates you can get there if it is linked with the public schools. Like, uh, um, and also we have the service center like Just Cafe. So, you c what is it? What it means? Like, you are entering cafe, you are ordering uh, tea, coffee. Steak, salad, company registration, marriage registration, uh, property registration. I don't know, like uh, some, some something else, uh, like any any service. Like there is more than 400 different services. I cannot list all them down, down here. So uh, while you finish. You often the, the, the waiter is bringing uh, all the ready documents to you and you have one bill. So in bill you have coffee, company registration fee, property registration fee, I don't know, like a, a, a salad, Caesar, Caesar salad. Yeah, you can order that also there. <laughs> yeah. And also we have uh, Just Drive, Just Drive. So you know, I guess, uh, McDonald's drive through yes? So it is working like McDonald's drive through Here I'm like, uh, yeah. Here I'm taking passport in. Uh, I'm taking passport in Just Drive. So actually, like we don't need a voice uh, for for this. So I, I came to the window. I'm not leaving a car even. Yeah, I came to the window, and I'm asking for my passport. I gave them my ID, through which they are identifying me, and that's all. Like they they will prepare now the document. It will need uh, just uh, two minutes and thirty seconds more. Not more. Not not not. Not more than that, I will just, yeah. So here is my passport. So I'm getting passport, yeah. So it's as easy as that. So like, uh, but there is no hamburger, at, unfortunately. No Big Mac. No Big Mac, no, no hamburger, but there is passport, you know, the, the document which I need in order to travel to US, for example. And unfortunately, the same similar thing in US, it's really hard to get. Because like uh, quite often you know, in our mindset is that whenever I think about bureaucracy, whenever I think that, think that I need to register something, immediately we're afraid of that. Yeah, because, oh my God, I need to go to the, some, some, uh, like, uh, uh, the, 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 some some specialists and uh, I need to ask to them uh, the, ask him her I don't know like uh, to register something and uh, of course they will be they will not be treated me like uh, as a human I will be I will feel myself there as an animal because they will tell me I just sit down go go away here is a red line don't cross that so usually they are speaking like that and why they are doing we will speak about that later so, and where is the way out from that everything? By the way, uh, here is some recognitions. So now let's forget about that background, where, what we have. So now we want to speak where we go. So what is the key problem? Why it is happening that governments are not serving us? Why it is happening that here we need to speak about big data and the big data are not available? You know, why, we're, why it is happening that data are not updated appropriately? Why it is happening that there is all the time problem of uh, matching, I don't know, problem of, I don't know, like um, uh, the having a single identification in property registry, in land cadastre, in, I don't know, population registry, and that's a huge problem. And when we're speaking about civic tech and when we're speaking about civil initiatives, that is something which is creating huge problem for us. And that, so, so we need to change that. We need to change that, otherwise we can, I don't know, uh, 
have some nice inter like initiatives, but they will not be good enough because the, we will not have access to the data which we need in order to really like uh, forget about bureaucrats and bureaucracies. So here is the my real presentation. Now I'm starting presentation. So yeah. So this is um, oops. I told this one. You know this guy. Yeah? Again, I told it in the car. I didn't tell this one to Gorbachev. <laughs> you know, there's a 10-year delay, delay in the Soviet Union of delivery of an automobile. And only one out of seven families in the Soviet Union own automobiles. There's a 10-year wait. And you go through a, quite a process when you're ready to buy, and then you put up the money in advance. And this happened to a fellow, and this is their story that they tell, this joke, that this man, he laid down his money and then the fellow he was in that was in charge said to him okay come back in 10 years and get your car and he said morning or afternoon <laughs> and <clears throat> and the fellow behind the counter said well 10 years from now what difference does it make and he said well the plumber's coming in the morning So this is what happens when government is doing everything. So that was the Soviet time, Soviet Union. So government was doing everything. And for example, just uh, that was not only like with cars, like to, to register your phone number, to, to get a phone number, you needed to come in Soviet time to some, I don't know, like a bureaucrat. And you needed to wait for six months for some technician who should come to your apartment and what what this technician was doing like he sh he was checking maybe you already have some phone number so like uh, you couldn't have two phone numbers but 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 actually the most cool guy in USR was the guy who had a two or three numbers three numbers was you you were like like I don't know like uh, you were like some master or something I don't know so most influential guy in your city or in your region so like country government was checking like not to have more than one number so what has happened what is in our part of the world now same is as it happening now so we have many like for example this is ukrainian mobile phone companies who are coming every day to us they are offering i don't know uh, like um Free talks, free SMSs, free internet, uh, uh, nice numbers, uh, phone with number, number without phone, I don't know, different kind of, let's say, offers what we're getting. And uh, that, that, that has been changed when, in a very simple way. Just government has uh, like, uh, organized some policy. Yes, some rules on the market, and that's all. The, the private company started like uh, uh, um, giving all these services to us. But but just imagine what is uh, like if what what would happen. So how the bureaucrat could possibly solve the problem? So again, let's go back to the Soviet time, and there is like. Uh, um, Bureaucrat, some some department who should issue the number, number your telephone number to you, and government is coming out with the initiative of reforming of this horrible system because there is like long queues, people are demanding more phone numbers, so we need to start reforms instead of like changing policy that private companies are jumping in, they are just uh, doing like uh, uh, they are just um, like. Uh, uh, starting reform of that and it is happening every day so uh, how many times you have heard for example in US reform of border police yeah I, I'm sure that many times just let's look at the at the state budget the US state budget how many how much money is spent on the reform but for example for me I don't know what 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 border police is doing what kind of reform is done there when I was crossing the border of US I was staying for in uh, for two hour and a half in Dallas Airport in order to go through passport control and somebody will tell me that it was because of security but no it was just because there were two only two counters opened out of 35 counters and only two persons were sitting there with uh, like um, uh, like uh, we, we, we at, the, at the desk to check the passport and that is why for example I was lucky because I had a connection flight from there but uh, unfortunately almost 20 or 25 persons which I which I've seen there they lost their like the, they missed their like uh, um, connection flight and it is happening just because bureaucrats are sitting on that side and when I started complaining why we are like I know I was uh, just uh, starting speaking that we are not animals we're just human beings you know and uh, please uh, treat us appropriately like they said that sorry but it's border police 
They have their standards. They know how to work. And I'm just looking on uh, like TV screen just next behind me, and uh, there is Obama, and who is welcoming me to U.S. So <laughs> welcome. We have such a nice uh, country, and you know I'm standing for two and a half, and I'm looking on President Obama. If I will have opportunity today, by the way, I will ask that question. So <laughs> what is the link between uh, like uh, that video? that welcome video on the service of border police which is there so i complained so much that at some point it was my turn so they like uh i went through this uh passport control but they put me in the seagate so seagate is extra check so they punished me yeah, because i was speaking too much in that like uh, uh queue and they told me that go go over there and they are checking me so same thing like um if 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 it if it happens that if it happens that no business um, and that there is no business in this uh, service de delivery and there is government they will start the reform and here is just list of the activities what they are doing usually initiation of reform analyzing of current situation initiation of legislative changes debates in the congress or congresses or in parliaments that how what is better how what kind of system we need to use five ten fifteen years plans. But like budgetary spendings, you are alloc they are allocating money for creating of the databases, some databases. Then they are examining infrastructure, and um, then of course they are creating online portal because they need to be to have some e. Yeah, so some e-governance. So e-governance is online portal, and on that portal, only possibility is just to have uh, appointment with some uh, public official to get a number. So that's that's uh, it's really like horrible. Like uh, like many many mayors are coming out and they're saying that we are so good that we have online portal where you can in online get your appointment with public official. And they don't, they are not saying that like that appointment can be like in two months. So when you are getting there, there is such a long queue already that that maybe you will you will get that appointment in in two months. So like finally, usually how it is uh, ending, like it is ending with selfie of the some some politician who initiated that reform with the web portal of uh, like queue management, which is in place there. But the reality is that people still need to pay bribe. To get a phone number in this case people still need to go through old lake procedures and nothing is changing so again uh what is the main principle what can change that everything main principle is competition what is happening in government we are speaking about civic tech we are speaking about open governments yes we are speaking about accessibilities we are speaking about like data which are not accessible which are not generated what can change that only thing can change that competition because governments and bureaucrats has the monopoly of some services, they, they are not changing that. And whenever you are starting some arguing, like the arguments, you are bringing some arguments that, for example, why are you spending so much money on the, your server infrastructure? There is a cloud. You, could, you can put your data on a cloud and it will be much cheaper than, than you, you are doing that. They are saying it is security. It is security. Because of security, we are doing that. But sorry, but... Snowden case, WikiLeaks case, where is the security? Who has secured the data in the, the like server centers which, we, which belong to the government? And most, the biggest problem is that whenever we start like a uh, discussion, like uh, um, well, well, most, mo most important is that who is responsible, who is re financially responsible that they, that data were lost? We, taxpayers, yes? We're responsible for that. And is there any person who will reimburse the uh, cost of the loss which, uh, of the data which has happened there? No. Nobody will bring that money back. But just imagine if, for example, Microsoft, Amazon, or some other clouds are serving government. And there is the leak like that. Who will reimburse that everything? Who will pay for that? The private companies. Not we, not taxpayers, so service providers. So again, even in, in cases where like uh, government think that they are too strong and they need to have exclusive, in the, even in that cases, government service is most horrible in the world. So we need competition. Just imagine border police. Let's take an example of border police. That government is outsourcing to three, four companies. So you can do the passport check at the border, yes? And I will pay $2 per each case. You know what will happen there? 
there will be very smiley nice people who will offer you coffee please come to our desk no no that desk is not is, is, is really bad so we are we will serve you a properly they will treat you really good because that's a business that's an income for them yes the same is doing for example airline companies they're organizing the, the business lounges i don't know some additional services for you because they are private they have financial incentive for that so the problem is uh, again like um that we are in a top-down subordination in the government. We are like, you know, like we are in time of old Egypt, yes? When Pharaoh was on top of the system and there were like some kind of, let's say, subordination. And same is in our countries, yes? Presidents, ministers, deputies, assistants, deputy assistants, I don't know, heads of units, deputy heads of units. And this is so strict regulation, this subordination that, for example, Deputy assistant of the assistant cannot get, cannot reach, I don't know, like uh, assistant directly. First, he needs to go, he or she needs to go to the deputy assistant, and then deputy assistant needs to go to the, with some, I don't know, topic to the assistant secretary, yes? So, I don't know, like, there, there are so many assistants that I, I'm really, comp com like, uh, com that's really complicated. So, but, but the trends are changing, and we are like this, yeah? We are like this citizen who is uh, running from one place to, <laughs> to another, <laughs> and we're asking uh, for help, of course, like, help us, like, uh, uh, and <laughs> we hate it, yeah. So, but paradigma is changing, just briefly. Let's compare the management of the Facebook and US uh, government. Facebook has one billion, more than one billion active users. Uh, they have just 7,185 employees, so it means that on each 144,000 users, they have just one employee but the US government uh, like US has 310 million like uh, citizens and uh, for them they have four four million four hundred thousand government employees we're including uh, we're not including army army is separately that's another like big figure uh, 72 uh, persons citizens and one bureaucrat yeah on top of that what is there yeah of course we are not comparing like many people who start that you know there is some different obligations the government is doing with a little bit more than just facebook but sorry civic tech if you are really supporting civic tech with the guys who are here we believe that we can do something better than government is doing yeah and and and, and that's the idea of civic tech i think and that's the idea of that kind of initiatives so i think that if we will be involved i have seen really brilliant like uh, small programs and software solutions which were done in in US which really generate some some participation of many people in some kind of civic activities and that's really great that uh, technologies are giving us opportunity to do that everything and we're doing much better than uh, government is doing and we're working in that case like Facebook management is because we are engaged in Facebook we are putting the post we are like like we're clicking on the like we're sharing we're commenting and so on and, and it's really something which amazes us which we like so um, all these successful let's say platforms are successful because we are involved so we are they're engaging us yes if we're not engaged that will not work but government government is telling us no 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 any engagements so here is subordination so here is some strict regulations so we know how to do that of course they're speaking about openness transparency and second part of the civic tech is also like some kind of uh, openness and uh, like uh, open uh, services and simplify all that part but reality is completely different they are not open they are not transparent they want to hide everything and whenever you are like complying the uh, complaining they are saying security security keyword security we know you don't know that you you, you can't understand that usually they are answering we know that better so uh, role of the government in future should be like role of the referee not like role of the player at the field. Just imagine if, um, I don't know, like, uh, who is now best basketball team in the US? Gold, golden, sorry? Ah, oh, that's a political. OK, I will, I will pick up the like, uh, no, example from Europe. So Barcelona, yeah? That's not a political question here, I guess. So Barcelona is playing, for example, against a uh, uh, referee's team. Yeah, Barcelona, best soccer like team in the world, is playing against the referees team, and referees are doing goal with hands, 
and it's good for them. Messi is, I don't know, like doing everything, I don't know, like very nice goal, and no, they were offside. Why? Because referees are playing against you. So they, they, they have right to solve and to decide like uh, whether there is goal or not. And that is happening like that today. Like the like governments are doing, treating us like that. They are referees, so they are creating the policies, rules and regulations, and plus they are executing that everything. And that is why we have so many corruption. That is why we have so many problems. That is why we have, we need to stay like animals in lines, in queues, yes? That is why we're afraid of contact with them. And that is why we're just in this kind of environments and we can just speak about like, uh, uh, nice miracles would, would, would what can happen around us. So it's time to do this everything and I think we can well the, the, the many things are changing around us and the, the, this is some kind of technological thing blockchain which really can change that everything. Just imagine what is the government? Government is third party when we two of us we want to communicate each other for example I want to sell property and you are going to buy my property. Government is the third party which is registering their everything. And that is why we need government. So we're saying that, of course, somebody needs to uh, like, uh, keep the data, yes? But blockchain, blockchain is solution, is a solution which is distributed, let's, let's say, solution. I, 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 my, my presentation is really out of time, but sorry about that. Um, uh, so what, what blockchain gives you, blockchain, Bitcoin is Bitcoin, Bitcoin, cryptocurrency is based on blockchain. So why it is very interesting, cryptocurrency, and not only Bitcoin, but others as well, because they are on, based on blockchain. So what, blo what, what they are doing, you can have, you can do transaction without third party, without bank. So you don't need any more bank. So minus 100 Bitcoin plus 100 Bitcoins. And system which is like uh, in this chain, can record that everything, and they are recording it in all the miners, like servers and all the different servers, which are linked with each other. So there is no possibility, first of all, manipulate, no possibility for manipulation, because there are many copies of the data. Second thing, there is no uh, extra need for, let's say, uh, third parties who need to prove something because bank is proving that I really have $100, which you are asking me, yes? So when I'm swiping the card, the just uh, bank is uh, Visa, what, what, what Visa is doing, yes? Visa is asking the server, do this guy has $100? And server is asking, yes, he has $100, and then uh, the, the, the transaction is done. When this money will, uh, transfer, will be transferred to that account, that's a different point, yes? But blockchain is doing that in real time. So for uh, Bitcoins, the same will happen with government services. Just imagine that we are starting developing of uh, land cadastres. Now, we are starting developing of uh, property registry without any government, let's say, uh, employees, bureaucrats uh, involvement. Only thing what the government is doing, and I think in this case, like politics and execution, like uh, parliament and executive power is like split it with each other. They are creating some po po rules of on, on, on in, in this country. So through elections, we're electing, I don't know, representatives, uh, our representatives in local council, who is creating uh, like, um, uh, the, and they are creating rules that, for example, in Chicago, we can build up maximum 100 store building. Yes, that's all, that, that's uh, what they're doing. But to get a permission for that, I will not need any more this, uh, this guy. So there can be authorized, let's say, uh, private service provider who can do that service for me. So which are uh, like working in, 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 in blockchain. So we used already the, this technology in Ukraine um, uh, for, for e auction system. So there are private uh, service providers who are, who are like who are having like uh, these uh, services, uh, so the, the, the uh, database, uh, um, uh, like a uh, user interface and uh, um, uh, bidding is uh, decentralized. So they all are uh, exchanging the data. So this is some kind of, let's say, evaluation. Now we are here in main, most places. So for example, for procurement system, database, bidding and user interface belongs to government. We moved to Ukraine. We a uh, little bit upgraded. We are calling it second generation of reforms. When database and bidding belongs to the government, but user interfaces are developed by private companies. And of course they are working like 
telecom companies are working through central server. So you are announcing tender here, automatically you have that information all on all the web pages, like which are operating on the market. You are putting your bid here, automatically your bid is everywhere. But we saw that still the problem is the government there. Because the key guy is in this case the IT administrator of the database. He can manipulate, he can change the data, that's one thing. <coughs> Second thing is that system needs upgrades and it's impossible to like uh, upgrade to without um, upgrades like I don't know like uh, like uh, Google Mac everybody is uh, sending us some upgrades for the softwares and uh, uh, system needs upgrades it, and it pos it's impossible to do without um, uh, without bureaucrat and now there is nine months let's say queue of uh, requests to change something in the system and that is why we moved to the blockchain system so now there is no center there so and it is like uh, is also we can like to to simplify it, understanding it it's work like it works like starfish so what does it mean? If you will like a cut in the middle of the starfish, both of the parts are still alive and they are not dying. So it, the system in the, operates in the same way. So it's impossible to kill that, that, that kind of system. For example, in Ukraine, tax authorities, six, um, six months ago, they came out and they said that they lost data for last two years. And everybody, uh, so what, what can we do? Everybody were asking, can you do something? Like uh, the, the, the question was like from private companies, I don't know, from somebody else, no, nothing. We lost the data. And I'm sure that somebody has paid a lot of money to lose the data, yes, because somebody <laughs> didn't want to show the data that he's here, like his company is not paying uh, like uh, money. But in this case, it's impossible. That's no possibility to do anything like that. And uh, like we see like uh, these kind of solutions in a property registry, tax registry, population registry, healthcare system everywhere. But what is most important, all these galaxy, this is all of them are big datas, big raw datas, which we can use for any kind of initiative. We can change, for example, tax um, text system, like which which exists here, because this text like um, uh, types and system like uh, text uh, types and percentage it exists because they are coming from papers. It was easy to administrate to tax people through that kind of like taxation system which exists now in U.S. For example, for me it's so complicated to to understand the U.S. tax system that I just gave up. I was going to like register my company here in U.S. So I said that like when I'm participating in some. I don't know, projects, maybe it could be better when you are US-based company, but it was really hard for me to understand the tax system, how to do the scrutiny work, how to I don't, minimize the payments, tax payments, and so on. In Georgia, for example, we have very simple uh, like flat taxes, like for example, income tax, VAT tax, and property tax, and that's all. From 1st of January, we even we went doesn't have any more profit tax. So, like, um, to operate there, it's much easier. So, I decided, like, to, to have that over there. And the um, last point is that we're moving to the P2P contact without any mediators, without any third parties. That's the future. And uh, this galaxy of P2P contacts is also big possibility for data, I don't know, data analysis, um, innovative ideas. God knows what kind of ideas will come to us or to somebody else whenever this everything will be possible, whenever the, such a big uh, data will be available. Of course, there is another thing of privacy, privacy pro pri uh, protection, but it's also uh, not a big problem to, to protect the privacy in this case because the key in this case is in my hand. Key, uh, key is here, in citizens' hands, not here. They are just creating policy. They cannot like uh, control your data or control your like uh, things and businesses. They're just developing the services, all these all these solutions. What 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 are operating on market? On the basis of that, we have this 5D principle. So I will not go in deep there. So the last point. So the future is in state as a platform, not in state as a service provider. So that's where entire world will go. We want that, we don't want that, it will happen. Yes, because we are fed up with all these pyramids of, and, and hierarchies and top to the bottom, let's say, approaches. Thank you very much and sorry that uh, my presentation was so long. Thank you. Two, two, so, two, 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 two questions. We can do the blitz, blitz tour of the question.
I hope that there is questions. Otherwise, I think that maybe maybe I will think that nobody understands what, what, <laughs> what I was speaking about. Please. Um, so two things that you talked about were the importance of competition and efficient government services, and then or in potentially efficient government services, and then also you had some criticism of top-down implementation. So yes. It seems that these creations of what the term public public service hall public service halls is one of your signature achievements, but that seems to be the pinnacle of not necessarily government competition because you're concentrating everything sure. in one sure. place. And also, that's a top-down. Yes. I'm trying to understand the contradiction. Okay, so that's a past. Yeah, that's a past, actually, that public service holds. For example, what we're trying to do in, in Ukraine is that, for example, Kiev is a big city. So they, we get, went to the shopping malls, and we said that, guys, you want more stream to your shopping mall, so we can outsource to you and open that kind of service center. But all in one. So all take all services. Yeah, so they are interested because extra 15,000, I don't know, persons who are coming to your shopping mall, it means that immediately price of your, let's say, um, building is going up. Yes, so like uh, in this case, in Kiev, there will be several places where you can go for this kind of services. Unfortunately, in Tbilisi, there is only one place. Just, we still have more or less good government who is who is like uh, citizen oriented. What happened in Georgia actually is that citizens are used to have already like these very simple services. So whenever there is queue, they're calling on a hotline. So they, they understand how government can treat them. So how should government tr treat them? So that's a, that's a case in, in case of Georgia. But here in Chicago, there can be 10 places which are giving you uh, like service in, in with the concept everything in one space so and they are competing with each other so I will if I will not uh, like the service centers in downtown I can go I don't know some to some shopping mall which is a little bit like in source and I can get there like some some services so there will not be any territorial restrictions there is there, there should not be so that's how we can create competition be, between these kind of service centers and but I fully agree that that's a past so no any monopolies no monopolies and we're against that and even if, like, uh, for example, if you want to register your property in Chicago and you are, for example, in D.C., can you do that? There is territorial restrictions, yes? So you need to come back to Chicago and you need to get your, like, document here. So that, that's, not a, that's, that's not a good, like, uh, thing, uh, well, what should, uh, like, in future it should not be like that. So there should not be, there should be, uh, should be exterritoriality. So I can choose not only inside of city, but I will be able to choose all around country, wherever I want. For example, in Georgia, we, in addition to that, have some Skype services as well. We are developing that part. For example, if I will lose party, pa my passport here, I will just call through video calls through Skype operator back in Georgia, and through DHL, I will get my new passport in three days. So I will not need even to go to that office. So that's a future, like that's a, like uh, something uh, which is upcoming and which would, which will be done. And in any case, we need to create some competition. If there is no competition, sooner or later, bureaucrats will close up that that possibility. Thank you. Please. Yes, a question about your. Is it on? <coughs> Okay. Question about your idea about using some kind of Wikipedia approach okay. for bureaucracy fighting. So, for investigation. For investigation, yeah. how are you going to prevent people from using it actually backwards, right? How, how if you're it comes preventing to serious in investigation? Yeah. There will be interested party with a lot of resources who can flood the system with information they want. Sure. To. So, how are you going to fight that? How we are fighting that in Wikipedia? Not really. We just waiting until someone gets up there and changes. Yeah, it makes correction, and it's a lot. Actually, of time. it will be almost the same there. It's a lot but, of time. But uh, why it's a lot of time? It's, it's not such a lot of time. So that, that's a lot of time for the person who is putting fake information, and that's much f uh, much shorter time for moderator who can do that with one click. So there is some, let's say, um, some some uh, levels in Wikipedia which which you can get and you can do that for like very easy. So uh, actually, what we are going to do—that's a really important question. 
what we're going to do from the initial point we will have some project team which will which will control some kind of let's say all the data which are there control is not a good word just which will control the sources how where these data are coming from so to put the to create the page on Wiki, wikipedia you need to um, uh, like identify the source where you have this information from yes otherwise you, you cannot create any page and then there is some kind of different levels of uh, uh, people in wiki uh, wiki Wikipedia who can manage, I don't, know, I don't know, they can delete your page and so on. So something similar with a with little bit more involvement will be in this case. Yes. So in any case, uh, I don't know, like uh, uh, still when we need some information in, from Encyclopedia, nobody's going back to the Britannica. Yeah, we forgot that they, they were very nice Encyclopedia like Britannica, which were done by scientists which were sitting in the rooms and thinking, uh, for example, uh, description of Ukraine. And they were thinking like, uh, what is what is Ukraine? So like, what is Ukraine? Whether it is country, whether it is just word, which uh, I don't know, something uh, is coming with that. And now I can put any information there. Yes, I can put description of Ukraine. If somebody doesn't agree, he can he can just change. That's very simple. That's very simple. That's how crowd is cooperating. So for example, same same as for example on Facebook, you can uh, put a huge number of porno videos. Yeah. But you cannot do that because immediately you are like uh, blocked. You are losing your like account. Yeah. So you, then you need to create another account, and uh, like they have some system there, analytical tool, which is doing that automatically. Okay. We'll go and fight with computer and open the accounts every, every second day. Yeah. They will do it much faster and faster. So the same thing is here. So really hard to control all the data which are coming there, but investigators like uh, uh, volunteer investigators, of course, they will go through the data, how uh, they will validate that in order to create this uh, everything. So again, it, it is at, at the initial point now. So in one year, we'll show you how it is working. Same as, for example, by the way, when I did the presentation at the, the uh, Prime Minister's office in Georgia, and I said that we're going to open this uh, Just Drive, Just Cafe, public service hall concept when we did the presentation, everybody said that you are just crazy, man. Like, it's impossible to do, they were saying. And, uh, but, but this is like past. This is not future. This is reality which is working and it is past. Same is, same is I'm sure that when uh, many of you has uh, initiated some ideas, some project, many people said that, come, man, that, that, that will not work. That will not work because, because only you understand what, what will work and what will not work. Because only in your mindset uh, that idea is uh, like uh, boiling in a way that uh, it, it really can succeed. So thank you very much. I'm really sorry we need to jump, go, go. run to the Obama, Obama event, and um, I will really try to ask like what is the like what is the idea to have such a nice speech when 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 you know like uh, on the screen in the, in the like uh, Dallas airport and there's such a horrible service uh, like uh, in parallel to that. Yes, what is an idea? What is a concept by behind that? Thank you very much, and I hope that we will have opportunity to uh, like work together and I don't know do many things together. I I think we, what we can start actually is that when we will have this kind of event in Georgia in in, in, in Ukraine and Georgia, and when you have event here, we can do some kind of online, I don't know, like uh, discussions, yeah, to, to, to speak about best practices. Because we always need to share the, the information because all of us were creating something. Finally, we came to the point when people started to be more and more creative, entrepreneurs, innovative, yeah, and, and, and that, that's really good. And I think we need to support each other. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Excellent.